Before you create type on a path, you will always need to have a path first. And to draw a path, the best tool to use is the pen tool. Now, if you are not familiar with the pen tool, you can check out another course that I created here on Yes, I'm a Designer, which will tell you everything you need to know about this tool. It's quite a difficult tool to get used to, but once you learn how it works, it will help you in many ways. And this is one of the examples when you will need this tool when you want to have type on a specific path. This is something that you can do in all three applications, but let me start first in Photoshop. So I have the pen tool selected. The keyboard shortcut is P, by the way. And if I click and click again, I can create straight lines with the pen tool. If I click and drag, I can create a curve. And by the way, as a side note, I just would like to tell you that I have the rubber band feature turned on, which you can find here in the options bar which helps me here in Photoshop to see my curve even before I actually create an anchor point. Once again, if you want to understand exactly what happens with the pen tool, then check out the Mastering the Pen Tool course. So let me just go back a couple of steps and I am going to create a nice wavy line here. So I click and drag and then I just simply click. So there's my path. And if I now select the Type tool, I can hover over this path and wherever I click, I will be able to start editing or adding text, but I will edit onto the path. So I can click, for example, here, and then I can start typing. I am typing, but as you can see, the text is not visible anymore. So what's the problem here? The end point of the type on the path is here. If I zoom a little bit closer, you will see it better. So let me just select the text again. So that little circle there represents the end of the text. So if I hold down Command or Control on PC, I can drag the end point out and then I will be able to add more text here. So now I can finish what I started typing. I am typing on a path. Now I can select this text, make it bigger by using the same keyboard shortcuts we already learned. I'm using command shift full stop and I can move this text around on the path quite easily. Once again, by holding down command, I can move the whole text from the left to right. If I click somewhere in the middle, I can do that, easily move it around. And you can see that's the start point and that's the end point. Remember, always holding down command or control on PC whenever you want to edit any of these points of this or any of these controls of the type on a path. So start point, move around, end point, move around, and the whole text itself together with the start and end points. There's one more thing you can do is that you can drag it, the whole text below the path or above. And with this changing the whole text, so the way it's written, now it starts from right to left. The great thing about type on a path is that we can still edit the path as well, not just the text on it. So if I select the direct selection tool or the path selection tool, I can work with the path. So let me just select the direct selection tool, which is this white arrow. With this, if I select any of the points, let me just select this middle point here, I can drag it down and I could make a completely different uh, path and the type will always follow these changes. So that is the way it works here in Photoshop. But let me show you also the way it works in Illustrator. So I just go back to Illustrator and I'm going to create a path here as well. You will see how similar it is. If I click, click and drag, and I click and drag again. Now the only thing here, I have to switch the fill color uh, or set the fill color to none, I can click on none. So set it to none. So there's no color assigned to this path. And then once again, I can use the type tool. And once again, same as in Photoshop, the cursor will change once I hover over the path. And then if I click on the path, I can start typing. So I can start typing and I can make again the text bigger or smaller. And the same way here, again, we can edit or make changes to the text 
But here we have to select the direct selection tool to be able to do that. Once we have that tool selected, we can move the start point around, the end point around, and we can click in the middle and then drag it down or move it around on the path the same way we, we have done it in Photoshop. But remember here we have to have the direct selection tool to be able to do this. And with the same tool I can also adjust my curve, uh, the handles or the anchor points. And last, let's check out InDesign. So I go to InDesign and here at the bottom I'm going to create the type on a path. Once again, first I create the path with the pen tool. So click, click and click. So we already have the path. And now, instead of using the type tool, here in InDesign we have to use the type on a path tool. And with that I can add text to this path. So now I am doing the same thing in InDesign. And once again, here if I want to make changes, I can use the direct selection tool or the path selection tool and I can move the start point around, I can move the end point around and again in the middle clicking it, I can drag it to below the path or above and I can move it around just like in the other applications. So these are the ways of creating type on a path and as you can see it's a little bit different in each of the applications but once you learn how to use it, it will be quite a simple technique. In the next video I'm going to continue talking about how to connect type to specific illustrated elements. We will learn how to place text into shapes.